Hi, I'm Brian Van, SportBikeTracker.com, and today we're going to do an install of the Akrapovic three-quarter exhaust system on our 2015 Yamaha YZF-R1 STG project bike. In order to get to the three-quarter system, what we need to do is first start with the slip-on they made for this bike. God, this thing is beautiful. It's literally like artwork in your hands. When you install this on a stock bike with the muffler box, you have a street legal bike. You are compliant with emission regulations, noise regulations, you're good to go. It comes with the certificate in the package, okay? Also included, it's gonna be a carbon heat shield. Beautiful, beautiful stuff here, right? Now, with the link pipe, which is optional, this eliminates that muffler box, okay? It's made out of titanium. Look at those welds. I mean, this is just, it's like next level stuff. The quality, the fitment of Akrapovic. It's amazing stuff. When you install this, you remove that muffler box. No longer street compliant, noise compliant, okay? Closed course, only that kind of stuff, right? So you're making a personal decision there when you do that. What I would recommend you, you buy this, these two pieces together to go three quarter, keep your stock muffler box. Remember, if you need to, you can put that bad boy back on, right, with your slip on and still be compliant. This ships with a second set of hardware and another heat shield, right? And that is right here. On this motorcycle now, what we'll be using is, I believe we'll end up running with this shield from the link pipe which bolts up to one of the clamps included with the slip-on, as well as a couple of mounting points here on the slip-on. It really cleans up the look. You won't need this other shield. Let's talk instructions real quick. The instructions it comes with are next level, just like the actual components themselves. They go into fine detail, torque specs, where to lube, what to lube with. They take you through the entire process in the most complete fashion you'll ever find from any manufacturer. Now with this motorcycle, one of the things that we're gonna do now, and I've already done it in a previous video, is we're going to be eliminating the exhaust servo and cables. Here it is right here, okay? Within the instructions here, what they talk about doing is removing just the cables leaving this in place and leaving it plugged in the servo motor. You know, you're putting on a high line exhaust like this. In my mind, you should eliminate all this, right? Get all the unused components off the motorcycle. You shave a little more weight and then to combat that check engine light, go ahead and install this ScooterNet exhaust servo buddy. It's a really affordable little plug in part. You lose more weight. It keeps that check engine light off, which is what you want. So my suggestion to you would be if you're going to do this, get an exhaust servo eliminator, or flash tune the bike. This motorcycle now has been flash tuned and I turn that stuff off, so I don't have any check engine light with this being removed. So you got a couple options there. I suggest choosing one of them. You'll notice right now my motorcycle is in track ready mode. We're about ready to head to Daytona here. Okay, so we've got race plastics on. A crop of it even shows you how to remove the fairings in the instructions. We have a video, a couple of videos that show me removing the fairings on the bike. I'll take you through the whole process too. We've already shown that stuff. Just search our YouTube channel for it. You'll find it, walk you right through it. When we come back, I'm gonna have the race lower off the motorcycle and we're gonna be begin disassembling the stock parts. Okay, what do we need tool-wise, right? Basic hand tools. And I got a four mil Allen for some of the body screws. I got a five, I got a six. Um, I got a ratchet and a socket here with a 10 for the stock exhaust clamp. 17 mil wrench for our O2 sensors. Uh, a couple of backup wrenches, I think 13 mil maybe. The unique tools you need with this uh, to work with the Akrapovic hardware. Uh, we need a 45 Torx and a 25 Torx. Uh, one's for the heat shield, the other one's for those clamps. So, Bear in mind, you're going to need that, and they also tell you WD-40 is all they want you cleaning their stuff off with before you start it. You don't want to damage the sticker, and you want to clean the titanium so you do not burn your handprints into your titanium. So let's go ahead and let's get rolling here. Five mil T-handle. We're going to loosen up the stock exhaust clamp right there. Use a six up here. Get that 
gorgeous stock canister off there by replacing this exhaust fan and muffler box with the Akrapovic pieces. We are looking at a 14.5 pound weight savings. Massive. Okay, oxygen sensors. I say this in every single video I do, put an exhaust on this bike. Two ways to do it. One, you can go ahead and tear everything apart, unplug them, pull the harnesses out, you know, so when you turn it, the wire turns with it, or you can do it my way. Loosen up the sensor. Notice I am twisting the wires in the same direction, right? Twisting to the left. As I rotate the sensor, you can see that harness is so long, you're just twisting the wires, it's no big deal, right? Perfect. Done it on this bike 15, 20 times, guess what, they still work fine. Sensor is off. I'm gonna loosen up the exhaust clamp. No need to take the clamp off, just go ahead and loosen it up. Now we have two exhaust mounts right here. And loosen these up, keep all your stock hardware. Even if you don't need to reuse it with the installation of your aftermarket parts, always keep them in your spares. You never know when you might run into a situation where you'll need it. Press brake lever. Okay, now we'll head over to the other side of the bike and do the same thing. All right, we'll start with our O2, our lambda sensor, if you will. Go ahead and loosen up this wiring harness retainer here so we can rotate the wires more easily. Put that back on later. Same thing, I'm going to rotate the harness as I rotate the sensor. We'll go to the clamp here on the stock muffler box. Loosen that up. We have our third and final mount for this gigantic muffler box. Pull that bad boy off. And to remove it, I like to support it back here. I'm gonna push from front to back as I wiggle it, supporting it in the back. Like so. Remember, this R1 comes with a titanium stock header. So we'll have a full tie system here in a minute. This is the culprit. This is all the weight and restriction right here in the muffler box. Okay, with this system now, we're going to be eliminating two of our exhaust mounts. Go ahead and pull those off right now. Uh, the one here in the center, under the frame, as well as the one over here by the rear set. Just held on with five millimeter fasteners. All right, once again, keep that in your spares pile. This is literally the third exhaust, fourth exhaust we've installed on this bike in the last week. Probably put all this stuff together with wing nuts pretty soon. Okay. Those two are off now, and we're ready to begin installing the system. First thing we're going to do, and remember, they have fully detailed instructions, so if you want to really go over that with a fine-tooth comb and, and follow their recommended procedure, you know, rock on, no worries there. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is get the clamps into position. Right? I'm going to set them up so that they're at an angle like this. Okay, these are the two barrel clamps. These are very high quality. These are so high quality, literally, you can rotate the fasteners by hand. You can see we've got one of the little temperature resistant washers here is caught inside there during the packaging. So we'll need to slide that out of there before we do our install. So good that we caught that. Go ahead and position that clamp like so. Now, it comes with some anti-seize. They're recommending that you use the white tube on the O2 threads as well as wipe a little bit on the inside 
of the pipe because that is going to help the dissimilar metals from seizing to one another. You know, if you need to pull this thing apart in the future, it's important that you take the time to do this right now. It makes it easier to slide together and easier to pull apart if needed. I like to squirt just a little bit on here. Very little is needed. And I'll hit the other side. Okay, ready to slide this into place. The Acropica stuff has built-in stops so that you know when you're on there all the way it literally stops moving. We're not going to clamp anything down right now. I'd also like to mention that this comes with a bun to accept aftermarket fuel systems that would maybe use an auto-tune, right? So you could put a O2 sensor back here. It comes plugged, and look at the professionalism, not only plugged, but safety wired from the factory as they anticipate most will not be using that. Next up, we're gonna fit our canister to the pipe. Just like on the link pipe, we're gonna start off just a little bit of anti-seize. Packaging to fit to performance, <laughs> Kropovic is literally on a level all their own. Okay, now before we slide that over, what we're going to want to do is get the clamp on. The clamp for the slip on actually incorporates the mounting point for the heat shield. Let's go ahead and slide that on. So this anti seize off my fingers. And now we're ready to slide this over. Like so. Mounting hardware. I would strongly recommend using Loctite as you put this together back here. I'm not going to because of the number of times this motorcycle comes back apart. There's really no need for me to do that. But for your application, you want to really hedge your bets, so make sure you use some Loctite here. At this time, I will tighten this down. Should use a backup wrench, but uh, actually the nut they supplied is serrated so it dug in so well I didn't even need to use that but we'll double check that later on down the road and I probably will drill that for safety wire just to be safe and make sure I don't have any issues. Now what I want to do is I want to fit the actual heat shield itself. Before I do that I'm going to take a minute and wipe some of these other areas down because once the heat shield's on we really won't be able to get back underneath there. So we'll get a little WD the reason they recommend this over like a brake clean is when you clean a system off with the brake cleaner, uh, it can damage the sticker. That's happened. And uh, obviously with something this beautiful, you don't want that to happen. So clean this off real nice. Just the areas where I don't think I'll be able to reach once I have the heat shield on. Try to wipe off as much of the excess as possible this obviously will burn off right when it's running when you first start it so I wouldn't be too alarmed by that. Some will evaporate before you start it and the rest as it gets warm may smoke just a little bit. Okay now we'll get that heat shield prepped and ready. God that looks good. They provide washers Right? Heat resistant washers and the fasteners already have thread lock compound on them. The best way to do this 
is to actually, you have to thread this through. Like so. Beautiful. And one more. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and fit these to the heat shield. Use the larger washer on the inside. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to get them started, right? And pull just a few threads through like that. Do that for each one. Just a few threads. And this will allow us to wiggle the fasteners around so we can get them started the heat shield itself is pretty rigid. Remember this is carbon so not a whole lot of flex to it. And then we'll need to bring our clamp into position as we go through this as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look behind the shield and in between the slip-on. Get these things all lined up and started here. Really kind of hard to show this on camera because it is pretty tight quarters. You can kind of hear and feel it kind of and we'll just get them started. Just a couple of turns, make sure everything's going on straight. Now let's go ahead and bring this clamp around here. Now, got that one pretty well snugged down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come here with my 45 Torx and snug up this clamp. You don't need to go crazy here, just a nice even torque will be sufficient. Like so. Now I'm ready to tighten each one of these down. Remember, you've got thread locker on here. Plus, the washers are compressing, so you don't really need to go crazy with this. These aren't going to vibrate out. Like so. Okay. Come on down the line. They recommend just a little bit of the anti-seize compound. On our O2s. So now, you want to make sure, to, don't get any of that on the sensor itself, just get it just on the threads. I'm going to wind the wires to the left, like so. Okay. Get the sensor started down here in my mid pipe. Watch what happens as I tighten it, it unwinds the wires, takes the pressure off. If you prefer to remove the sensor, absolutely go ahead and do that. I just do this pretty much at this point as a time saving measure. And then we've got our wrench. Snug the sensor up. the pipe is seated perfectly. We'll go ahead and snug this clamp. The 
rotate it up as far as I can. It actually has a groove to ride in. <clears throat> nice, even pressure. And we'll go to the other side, tighten the clamp, install the sensor. Start off over here with our clamp. Rotate that up into position. Like so. All right, anti-seize here. started. Smug it up. Make sure that maintain good routing here. I don't have any contact anywhere. Over and grab the wire loom that we had. Is everything together nicely? Okay. Now, the last thing I'm going to do before I put the lower fairing on is I want to take the WD 40 and I want to thoroughly wipe down the mid pipe and make sure that I have all the handprints off. That is key. Remember, if you leave the handprints, your handprints on, you don't clean it, you start it, they're going to burn in, they'll be there forever and you're not going to be happy. All right, we've got the motor warmed up a bit. Lower fairing is on the bike and we are ready to go. smoke coming off the pipe that is normal remember that is going to be that WD-40 burning off I don't know about you but I'm impressed they fit great I really really like the sound just the way it mounts up to the bike it's so close to the swing arm yet there's no chance it's gonna hit it bottom line is it's the most expensive stuff but it is next level quality fitment performance this is the Akrapovic three-quarter. Remember, we've got the slip-on and the optional link pipe put together install on our 2015 Yamaha YZF-R1 STG project bike.